Uh, hi, I'm going to talk about protocol buffers uh, in the context uh, of how to uh, use it to address uh, uh, large applications, complex applications. A uh, few challenges in large systems, uh, they typically have multiple components uh, all talking to each other. The components can be in, in a heterogeneous uh, environment and uh, they can have different release and deployment cycles, so you have to take care of versionings. Um, so, therefore, it is important to define the interfaces between components clearly and to handle uh, changes and versioning uh, elegantly um, and be able to interoperate between languages and platforms and all this without introducing too much uh, of inefficiency or complexity. Uh, so, I think protocol buffers is a nice way to do uh, some of this. Uh, it is a data exchange format, uh, you can call it a serialization format and plus uh, RPC service uh, specification also. It was open sourced by Google. Uh, it is used by Google internally and uh, a lot of uh, other large applications uh, use it to expose APIs. In Julia, uh, there is a package protobuf.jl, you can uh, use the package manager to uh, start using it. And it will provide a Proto-C plugin. Proto-C is the protobuf compiler, uh, which converts the IDL to uh, uh, Julia code. Uh, so uh, the pro uh, protobuf.jl provides a plugin for Julia code, uh, Julia code generation. And it also has the uh, serialization and deserialization uh, implemented. Uh, to start using it, you just have to say using protobuf, protobuf as usual. Uh, it provides structured messages. Uh, so, mes a message in protobuf is a set of fields, uh, just like a type in Julia. Um, the fields themselves are typed, and the field type determines the wire format. The fields have tags, which are numbers. Uh, the number identifies the field and also determines the sequence in which the field will be serialized. And uh, the fields can have rules. Uh, the rules can say uh, whether a field is required or whether it is optional. And whether the field is uh, repeated, in which case it is an array. Or uh, if it has a default value, which default value to use. Uh, this is a simple example. Um, so we have uh, a namespace uh, called stocks. And we are defining two structures. One is a stock quote with a symbol and a price, and a portfolio which has an array of uh, quotes and uh, a count indicating how many are there. Um, so, uh, in uh, further down, I'm going to use this as an example. Uh, so I'll just uh, write this into a specification file. So we have a stocks.proto file now with this specification. Uh, uh, it is, uh, uh, by default, the, uh, the distribution that you download would, would have support for Java, Python, and C++, but there are some 30 other languages which are supported through add-ons, uh, including Julia. So this is a list of uh, add-ons. Uh, so you can find support for all these languages. And uh, here is Julia. Uh, let's try to run our example across uh, a sample application um, between Python and Julia. So uh, I'm I'm now using uh, uh, Proto C to generate both Python code and Julia code from the same specification file. Uh, so let's see an example. Uh, let's see what it uh, generated. So this is where the code would have gone. Uh, so for the namespace, it created a uh, module, and the actual code went into this. So we have our stocks type. Uh, sorry, uh, the uh, code type and the portfolio type with the fields. And it also generated a bunch of other helper methods uh, uh, for uh, comparison and stuff. Uh, this is an example uh, Python server, uh, which listens on a socket and uh, 
um, returns a portfolio with two stocks to whoever connects to it. And this is a Julia client, uh, which connects to a server to read a portfolio. So let's try to run our Python server and the Julia client. Uh, so this is the Python server running in the background. And this is the Julia client trying to connect to it and read a portfolio. And it read a portfolio of two stocks. Uh, the structures are extensible. Uh, that means we can compose and reuse uh, structures. So we can import structure definitions uh, using include another structure definition file. We can have nested structures. We can have a structure reference to itself. Um, it lets you handle changes and uh, versioning of structures very easily. Uh, so in a new version of a structure, you can add a field or change the type of a field, uh, as long as the type is a related type. Um, so you can, you, can, you can probably shift between uh, different in integer types and different floating point types. Um, if you add a field, uh, so, so, uh, so, uh, so the rule is if, uh, if uh, while reading a structure, uh, um, if you did not read a field, then it will get the default value. So any missing fields uh, re result in the field getting the default value. Unknown field uh, encountered would be ignored. So as long as the application logic allows, um, uh, you will be able to uh, have a smooth uh, upgra uh, upgrade process. We'll just take the same example and change a few things and see how it works. So this is stocks two, which is which is the same as uh, stocks uh, that we saw earlier, but I have changed the type of count to in sixty four. Uh, it was in thirty two earlier, and I have added a new field which is the client ID, and I'm going to generate only the Julia code, and have the Python server running with the old code. So this is the new Julia client. I'll run the old Python server and try to connect the new Julia client to it. So we are still able to read, but uh, the new field uh, that we added uh, got the default value of zero, and the, uh, the field with the uh, type changed, uh, we were still able to, uh, able to read it. Uh, the serialization format is pretty efficient. It is very compact, and uh, it is often much smaller than um, what other other uh, protocols will give. Uh, so let's take an example. This is a type with uh, many uh, many different fields, <coughs> and arrays also. <coughs> and we will compare uh, JSON serialization and uh, Julia native serialization with uh, what uh, protobuf can do. Uh, so what we got from protobuf was around 1.8k, and Julia was pretty close at 2.2k. Uh, JSON was slightly higher at 3.3k. Uh, as I said, it also has support for, for our RPC services. So service interfaces that are defined in the specification and the code generator then generates stubs for them. Uh, there has to be a RPC library which, uh, uh, which, uh, which you can use. Uh, um, I mean, you will have to provide the RPC library, but that can be a standard RPC li library. And uh, that should provide the plumbing. As long as these three are done, uh, the application's client just needs, uh, needs to call the method as any other method, uh, any other local method. Uh, so we have used this in uh, a package called le.jl, which is a Hadoop and Yarn client. And let's see some uh, example code from there. So this is the generated stub. So as you uh, see, uh, uh, so these are the uh, methods that were generated. There are two methods for uh, two functions are there. Um, and uh, there are two versions of it. One is the async version, uh, which takes a, um, 
uh, takes a uh, callback function. The other one is a synchronous function, which returns the result. And this is an RPC library impl implemented for uh, Hadoop. Uh, and th th there are just two things that need to be implemented, a controller, which doesn't really uh, need to do much. In our case, it just uh, prints out some, it keeps a debug flag. And the RPC channel, which uh, actually holds the socket and uh, does the to talking over the, kind of, uh, over the network. And this uh, is where it is used in the application. So application uh, just creates a uh, structure of this type and uh, fills in some fields and calls the method here. Uh, so far, so good, but uh, it's not always uh, suitable uh, for all, all purposes. Uh, if if the, if a schema cannot be defined, that is, it is it's a loose format, uh, um, then um, yeah, then obviously we cannot use protobuf. Uh, then we need something self-descriptive. Uh, we we, uh, we cannot have uh, circular references, uh, um, and. Uh, if we need the serialized data to be human readable, then uh, uh, this produces binary, so obviously it's not suitable. But uh, there is a new version of the specification coming up, uh, which is version three, which uh, promises to be simpler and less ambiguous, and uh, it will have a, a map type, which can be used to address ad hoc data types, and uh, it can produce either uh, binary or text encoding. Uh, uh, so even uh, um, it probably can be human readable. Uh, that's all from me now. Any questions?